And we're live. That's right. We're live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'm Dave, and this is Let's Have a Chat About Leadership for Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. I just had to make sure it was up and running. So welcome. Thanks for stopping by. If you're watching live, I appreciate you. I always appreciate you watching live. If you're watching us on replay, I appreciate you as well. You're taking time, and I appreciate that. And that means a lot to me. I know your time is valuable. and. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm going to do my best not to abuse it. So, but thank you for lending me your ear and uh, looking in my direction. So for today, again, it is Tuesday, and as always, Tuesday we talk about. Oops, look what I did. I hit the wrong button. There we go. Sorry about that. Oh man, really hit the wrong button. There we go. Leadership in the news. Leadership in the news. And so, as you saw the uh, the, the show notes, it uh, it talked about. Has technology changed us? And it's 20, well, 20, it's the end of 2019. We've got a couple of days left. I mean, it's like, what, uh, 20 days, 21 days, three weeks till the end of the year. It's to the end of the year, the end of the teens. We go into 2020. And now some people say it's a new decade, and some people say, no, the new decade starts at 2021. So it's just whatever party, whatever line you believe in. Um, it's coming. A new new decade is coming. The we've just completed. We're about to complete the second decade of the 2000s of the 21st century. We're about to enter the third decade. Can you believe that? The third decade. That is crazy. And uh, it's going to be interesting times. It always is interesting times, especially when you you're looking at something new and promising, and you go forward. And as I remember Y2K, I, I would guess I was alive for Y2K. I was actually working someplace. And Y2K, uh, the big buildup to that, and I, I will forever um, remember that because there was such a big buildup for the year 2000, and it was going to break all the computers, all the systems, all the technology that we had at the time was going to fail. It was going to be, it was going to throw the world into chaos, and it was going to be the end of civilization as we knew it. Well, I still remember my, uh, I kind of, kind of already done, we'd already done some testing and we knew it wasn't going to happen, but you know, the powers that be at the time, the powers that I worked for at the time, they said, no, you know what? We don't still don't trust you. You need to come in at 11. Uh, you need to be here by nine o'clock, which I had no idea. And you'll get to go home after, but you'll get to celebrate the new millennium, the dawn of the new millennium, the start of the new millennium. At work, and I was like, well, you know, I knew at that point that times were, you know, uh, this was nonsense because that moment was never ever going to happen in my life. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to live a thousand years unless, you know, they cut off my head, freeze me, and wake me up again, and in, in, you know, for, for three thousand. So, whatever. Anyway, that's not that's not the point. The point is, is that we were all afraid of technology then, and now. Um, we're looking at on the eve, on the precipice of 2020, we're, we're there, and we're looking back, at, and there's one article from USA Today, is 2020, how tech has changed us, how tech has changed us over the past 10 years, and I got, and it was a really interesting little article, I got to think, well, you know what, it's not just tech, it's what we've done with it, it's what we've done with it, it's what we're going to do with it, it's where we're going with it, and it's going to be interesting times, so I'm just going to do a little review on, on kind of the things that are gone. Uh, MySpace. Remember MySpace? Tom, that was his name. He was your first friend on MySpace, which was the precursor to Facebook. Yeah, Tom and MySpace. Well, that's gone. I mean, it's still kind of there, but nobody visits that. They had like 32 million visitors a year, and it was huge. It was the places where bands were getting discovered. Some little kid playing, banging on the drums got discovered there, and now he's just as much of a knucklehead as he was back then. So, uh, Again, so it served its purpose, it served it well, it, it gave people hope, it gave people inspiration, but then comes Facebook and it just totally wiped it off the map. I mean, it, like I said, it's still virtually there, but it's again, who goes to MySpace? I mean, I don't even remember my password. Um, Blackberries, remember those, the Blackberry devices, all of the, the little numbers on the, the phone, but it had a little screen and all the keyboard on board, on board keyboard, it didn't have a number pad, it had a keyboard, tiny little keyboard. Yeah, well, uh, it's gone. It's gone. Uh, I was going to say the flip phone, but guess what? The flip phone is making a comeback. It's the Razer, and it's uh, back then it was like a couple hundred bucks. Now it's about a thousand and change for a brand new Razer phone, and it is still kind of a flip phone. 
But uh, for the most part, the flip phones are all but gone. I'm sure, there's some. There's still some being used for some uh, industrial applications, business applications, and they exist, but not on the mainstream market. I mean, now another mainstream market is is all handheld screens, I and mean, that's that's what we have now. And we're walking around with these little tiny little tablets in our hands, or tiny little notebooks in our hands, which is kind of pretty cool. Kind of like you start thinking about it. There was a time, kids, kids. There was a time. There was no. Uh, Apple iPhone. No, there was a time. It was a computer back then. That's all there was. And uh, but no, no iPhone. No, nothing, none of that nonsense. No MacBooks. Nothing like that. But there was a time. But luckily, we're here now. So what have we got now? Well, guess what we've got now. Back in two thousand, what two thousand nine? Uh, Self-driving cars were nothing but a pipe dream. Crazy, right? Those pipe dream. Uh, Alexa, the Echo, the Google Home, and all that. You know, now it's kind of like I walk in any room and I'll say, uh, Alexa, turn off the lights. And Alexa will turn off the lights. Not in this room for that reason and that reason alone. But, you know, turn on the Christmas tree. Boom, it's on. Just like that. Alexa, call so-and-so. Boom, it makes the connection. I don't have to dial my phone anymore. Uh, let's see, Chromebooks. Chrome, the Chrome operating system didn't exist 10 years ago. The... Uh, but, oh, yeah, the Oculus, the little virtual reality headset. It was a pipe dream back then. It was kind of on the verge of it happening. We'd see these, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollar uh, $30,000 prototypes and, and content that was out there. And it was going to happen, and it was happening. But uh, it's here now. It's here now. And 10 years ago, that wasn't. So what does that say? What does that say? Is uh, The next 10 years is definitely going to bring us a lot of good. It's also going to bring us a lot of bad. Who knows? We might see the end of uh, might see the end of civilization as we know it in the next ten years. And why is that? Because again, too many things are happening. Too many, too many situations. Too many parties are getting involved, and it's going to get to the point. And I'm not saying civilization as a whole, but when I'm saying civilization on the technology side, it's going to start to splinter, and there'll be factions of technologists and futurists and users and There'll be the, the line that just uses it only for work and at work, and they'll avoid it at home because it's been so intrusive in our lives. It's going to get worse. There's going to be those purists that believe that, um, you know, our medical records are not safe and they're going to need to go back to paper and in storage facilities and locked up. And it'll take two, three days to get records from five years ago, things like that. But it, it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. There's too many. If you go to privacyrights.org, again, privacyrights.org, you'll see all the data breaches. They make these lists of data breaches. And it's crazy. You sit there and just scroll through it. Look, look at what happened last week. Look at what happened the week before. And you'll just scroll through it. And so, again, we're going to see a big shift in security. That much is true. We're also going to see a big shift in, um, well, speaking of health, on the health-enabled devices that we wear. Um, I'm not wearing mine right now, but my uh, Apple Watch, uh, you know, it tracks my heartbeat, tracks uh, when I go out, how, I'll lock, how often I walk, how many steps I've taken, what my heart rate is, does all of that. Folks, it's going to go, it's going to go deeper. It's going to go deeper. But again, who's protecting that data? Who's protecting that data? And I've talked about it several episodes here. And so that's going to be a big thing in the next 10 years is, is security, the data, and how much data it is actually collecting from you and about you and how much of that is going to actually impact your life, your life, your health, and what you do with it. So something to think about. And again, a lot of it centers on you as the individual, as the user, as the person who picks up the phone, as the person who's on the camera, as the person who's behind the camera, as the person who is watching the show. A lot of it is going to depend on how you you perceive and what you do with the information you're given and the understanding of that. Now, sometimes there's going to be, uh, well, there's going to be those parties, those outside uninterested third parties that are out there just to do malicious acts because they can, or, hey, watch this, hold my beer kind of situation. Um, how much of that's going to influence? I guarantee you another thing that's going to happen is voting. It's going to change. The technology behind voting is going to change. But the technology behind influencing your vote, uh, it's not going to change because, again, it can't change. It can't change because 
you have to, if you're one of these public facing organizations, you have to allow those individuals that want to share and spread their message, you have to allow them the opportunity to. You know, because again, if you especially if you're a publicly traded company, privately traded companies, I could care less. I could not care less. There we go. Sorry about that. I could not care less. Because uh, again, private entities, it's it's up to them what they want to believe, what they want to listen to, what they want to follow, who they want to support, who they want to endorse. But in the end, you know, it, it's going to be an issue and it's going to be something that's going to get big and it's going to be crazy. But it will happen. And again, it all points back to you. It all points back to you as to how much you want to be involved, how much you want to change your life and how much you allow others to change it for you. And again, so the leadership aspect of today's show falls back on you is that you've got to take charge of your information. You've got to take charge of what you want to believe in. You've got to take charge of yourself and don't allow others to feed into you and allow and make their decisions your decisions. That's where I'm coming from with that. Because again, you saw how much technology has changed in the next 10 years. Imagine the bigger impact it's going to have on your personal life in the next 10 years. So again, things are gone. Things will go. Some things will go away, but some things will just improve and get worse and get better. And it's up to you to decide, not anybody else. So you figure that out. Folks, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and bring today's episode to a close. Today is a uh, Tuesday, December 10, and we're talking about leadership in the news. And in this case, we're talking about technology, how it's changed in the past 10 years to today. And we're looking forward as well. As always, I do invite you to follow me on Twitter at Dave Guerra and follow me on Instagram as Dave underscore Guerra. And of course, on Facebook, the David Guerra. That's the page here. So listen, until tomorrow, I thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by. And uh, have a great evening.